Ladies and gentlemen, la, 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 ladies and gentlemen, the dream, the, 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 the dream team, the, 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 the dream team is in the house. Buenos dias, six in the morning, done. Get the fuck up my radio. Spence on Latira, Raza Radio. Taking it over, me and Big Rojo. We're making our presence be felt. We're going to feel your presence. Um, this is Russell Radio, right? And first and foremost, what I wanted to say was gente. We are here for the people. Rojo, by the people. That's how we get down, right? Um, we got a lot of trending topics. This is the channel for trending topics. This last week, man, it's been a rough one for us. Rojo's been going through a lot. I've been going through a lot. I've been very busy. He's been busy, man. He had some monetization problems on his other channel. Him and Flacco went ahead and worked that out, got it together, took a lot of man hours, a lot of manpower. But at the end of the day, everything is good. Um, Rojo's also dealing with some back issues. Holmes has got him sitting down, but never sitting out. He's going to make it happen even if he has to fight through it. Now, trending topics. That's why Rasa Radio is here. Four, six in the morning, man. I know it's early. Deal with it, gente. Deal with it, because we're really going to get it in. We're going to start first and foremost with the first topic of the day, and that's going to be Raiders, something near and dear to my heart, undefeated preseason, man, smashed on the Patriots. Oh, no, no Tom Brady, right? What would you think about that game, Raul? Man, just like they've done all preseason, man, they've, they've, they've looked good, bro. They've looked good. We all know preseason, man, you got to take it with a grain of salt, man. I've seen a lot of you know, four and O teams in the preseason, three and one end up not even making 500 for the year, man. So although there is a lot of positives, man, I still got to, I still got to wait for the regular season myself. You know, there's no time to celebrate, time to work, man. They got to, they got to do it, man. They got to, they got to do it in real life, man. A lot of these people are second and third string people they're playing against. People get all excited. Oh, we're going to the playoffs this year. And man, bro, you gotta, yeah. Anything you gotta wait and see, bro. You gotta wait and see. You know, for, for those of you that are out there, and I know the Rasa, man, we tend to uh, uh, go with the, uh, our teams. And, and we got a lot. I think the biggest supporting um, cast, I say the supporting cast for the Raiders will be the Rasa, man. Traditionally, we've had, we're the majority of the fans, man, us and the brothers, of course. Um, and, and, and we don't travel lightly, man. We don't, and we don't take it too hard lightly when they're doing good, man. We want to see them win. This is our year. I truly believe um, that this is just a start of a new beginning. I think this is a start of what's to come. Um, what it definitely shows us is our third stringers are better than other teams' third stringers. We know that for to be a fact. Um, now let's see what our first stringers does. Let's see what fucking Carr does, right? Um, shout out to Carr, Fresno State. We'll see what he does. I'm not sold on Carr, but I am sold on his receiving core and the team. So we're going to just have to see, just like Rojo says, man, you can't base nothing on preseason. It's preseason. Just like it's pre-cum. You know what I mean? You, you, I don't ever know what I'm going to end, girl. You know what I mean? So might, the pre-cum might come out 30 seconds, but the real load, you know what I mean? 20, 25 minutes. Maybe, right? Anyways, but you can never judge nothing on pre, right? So so we're going to have to see how it works out. Um, there's another team. Yay, area. San Francisco 49ers or the Santa Clara 49ers, what I like to call them. What happened, Holmes? <laughs> They couldn't stop nothing. They couldn't stop that run game for sure. That 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 dude's a beast, though, man. That little Texan running back. Yeah. I wasn't familiar with him before this weekend, but he did whatever he wanted to all game. They had no answer. You know what I mean? Uh, Trey Lance. I don't know if he's the answer you guys are looking for, man. But he mm -hmm. just looked like a a regular regular dude, not the future of the franchise. Mm -hmm. He looks like more questions than answers, right? Um, very questionable. Now, of course, usually when these hot, young, and I don't so can get your head out the gutter. When I'm saying these hot, trending, young quarterbacks come out of the cuts, man, they're supposed to be good. Look at Rojo laughing at me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It just came out like that, right? But you know what I'm saying, man? When these fucking quarterbacks that are supposed to be the one, right, come out the cuts, man, um, usually they start on fire from the gate. doesn't matter if it's preseason. If they fucking touch a ball, they know how to throw it, right? Um he looks like a development project, meaning like he still needs a year to develop. Um, do they still got Garoppolo, porn star Jimmy? He's still Jimmy? there. He's okay, still there. They're going to need him. They're going to need him this year. He'll be in by th by game three. Um, I just don't think Trey Lance is the one. I know people want to believe it, but usually, like when you had quarterbacks like Kyler Murray, you know he came out a young prospect. He did exactly what we thought he was going to do, and he's continued it. When we had uh, uh, another quarterback, man, uh, I. Deshaun Watson, he came out, 
He knew exactly what he was going to do. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, well, what about the white guys? They're... We're going to get to that. Uh, 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 this quarterback, the one that plays for Jacksonville, man, long-haired white guy came from Ohio State or wherever he came from, right? He did his thing just like was expected. So there's certain quarterbacks that come out and they're expected to do something. They do it. Trey Lance is expected to be one of those. He hasn't showed it to me yet. You know? Oh, I agree. I agree. I mean, it, like I said, this is preseason, man. We'll see. But yeah, the games only get tougher. You know, preseasons, you know, that's like practice. Allen Iverson, practice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a glorified scrimmage, bro. So who knows, man? Yeah. But he's going to be coming against people that mean to do him harm. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, they're, they're, they got bad intentions. They're, they're trying to remove him from the yard line, yep. basically. They're trying to take him off the yard. Trying to um, be his ass. Yeah, they're, they're definitely. Speaking of that, man, let's talk about Triple G Canelo. Triple G Canelo coming up. Um, the old guy versus the young guy that's getting old. Now, the way I look at it is, and I'm going to be totally honest with you, I'm a big Canelo fan, big Triple G fan as well. I love his chin. I love the way he's been doing it for years. He's 103 years old, though. He's older. I think he's way past his prime. He looked exposed in that last fight. Even though he won uh, quite handily, he didn't win in Triple G fashion. Yeah. You know, spectacular fashion. Knockout, just destruction. So um, I think this fight is is way past. It's, I mean, I thought the original fight was way past when it should have been held. I thought, you know what I mean? They, Canelo was coming into his prime. Triple OG was at the end of his prime. So maybe that first fight. Um, but the way I got it, and I've said it before, I've reiterated it over and over again. I'm sure we have it the same way. Um, I got Triple OG, the first fight, second fight, a draw. Likewise. Yeah. That's how I, I got it. You know, I, I, think, I keep it real. I don't think, you know, hey, much love to Canelo, you know, but I, I, I believe Triple G won. Yeah. And I don't think uh, – I don't think there was enough for Canelo to win the second either. You know, mm. Triple G won the first one. Oh, I've, watched, I've watched it six, seven times. You know what I mean? Um, the second one, no, nah, it, it was a draw. It was a right. It was a draw. This yeah. one, if Trip, if 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 Canelo can't pull this one off, it's not going to look good. You know, it's not going to look good, especially with his last defeat. Yeah. Triple Triple G. I mean, he's not. He's not world famous, famous, famous like Canelo and Tyson and, and Tyson Fury even, but he is a handful, bro. I'm only, worried, his, I'm only worried about his age. I mean, that's the only thing. Yeah. It was I, I I got Canelo by knockout in this one just because I think Canelo coming off of that defeat um wants to prove to the world that he's the, the pound for pound king, like he was prior to that, you know, losing a bivol. So I believe he's gonna come in with bad intentions. I believe um Triple OG is just a little too old, man. Even with the skills and knowing Canelo in the ring, I believe we're going to see a whole different Canelo. I, I think we're going to see Canelo, uh, you know, because what we got to understand is this. We got a monster. There's a monster in the division waiting in the cuts named Benavides. Okay, David, the, the Mexican monster, El Cucuy himself, Benavides, is in the cuts. He'll fuck anyone up, he says. He says they're all ducking him, right? I believe truly... Um, Canelo knows that eventually he cannot duck that fight. Eventually, they're gonna he's gonna have to see Benavides. I believe Benavides is a is a monster. So I believe that in order to show Benavides what he's made of, Canelo's gonna have to knock Triple G out in a spectacular fashion. Maybe get one more fight under his belt, and then um, he'll meet up with Benavides. That's what I think is gonna happen. Triple you know. G's got a jaw. The first thing you lose is speed. You know, you know, Triple G's got the power. I, I'm going to have to agree with you, though. I think I think Canelo's going to have something to prove after losing, even though it wasn't in his weight division and whatever. He got the boy got. Hands he got elbow. You know, you know, he, he got some hands put on him. And, and to get back to to, you know, in his own mind, the, the pride he has. Let's let's cut the weight factor out of the equation. Just the record, you know, being a Mexican boxer, that that pride that comes with that. He's gonna come out and do a showing, bro. Yeah. Tri triple OG or triple G, he's still got that chin and he's still gonna have that whack him. So no, he's I mean, every every boxer's got a fighter's punch. Every fighter's got a fighter's punch. You just never know it could end just like that. We seen what happened last week. UFC Leon Edwards KO'd Usman in the last 54 seconds. So if anyone has a fighting punch. If you're a professional, you can professionally knock someone out. Um, I I think when you're in the limelight like Canelo, he's been notoriously a hard worker. I think um, he bit off more he could chew in the weight division, you know, that he went up. Um, and now he's back to where he's more comfortable. I, I believe he he ends uh, uh, I, he ends Triple G by about the eighth round. I think Triple G's 
shown um, that he can hang with Canelo maybe the first three, four rounds, the first fill-out rounds. And, you know, Canelo starts to come on after the fourth. I believe Canelo puts him away by the eighth. Devastating fast. She's going to knock him out. That's just what I believe. We'll see. He needs to. All right, look, it's not even is he going to. He needs to. If he goes and outpoints him and it goes all the way again, what has Canelo proved? That he just cannot beat this guy outright. In order, he needs to ex exercise this demon right here, which is Triple G, in order to prove that he's elite as they think he is or as we say he is, he has to beat Triple G handily. Yeah, because deep down inside, he knows as well as most, most fans know that he hasn't beat Triple G yet. No, he has not. And, he, and he's he's lost by points in real life. You know, the judges had it one way. I yeah. disagree. Everybody I've talked to disagrees. But uh, yeah. what what about uh, we got a, a dope-ass UFC thing coming up, too? Absolutely. Hometown boys, hero. Hometown boys, man. Hometown. When I say hometown, I mean same area code. Do so, Nita, man. Stand up. Shout out to Stockton, Lodi, that whole area. You already know what it is, man. Uh, shout out to Stockton, the grimiest city in California, man. They'll take your whole flux capacitor. We got Nate Diaz versus Chemayev, right? Chemayev um, is a monster, okay? Uh, uh, this guy, for anyone who doesn't know who I'm talking about, man, Google him, right? We're talking about picking people up, manhandling, picking dudes up, and literally walking over to the cage with Dana White with the man, grown man in his hands and asking Dana for a championship fight and then slamming dude on his head and choking him out. No one's ever done some of the things Chemayev has done, um, do I think uh, uh, Nate Diaz is in trouble? I don't. I absolutely don't. I think I think this guy, even though he's a monster and he has skills, I think that he uh, potentially could take the L to Nate because Nate's a vet. Nate has them hands. And if they go to the ground, Nate will submit him, I believe. Nate Nate's a handful no matter what. I mean, he hasn't really had the most fights lately, man. We got to worry about some ring rust and whatever man but he's been doing it so long he wants he wants that big money you know what i mean to be relevant again he has to get this w and uh it's a it's a tough one for him though bro that that, that dude oh. like you said he's he's no joke man he reminds me of a khabib kind of bro he's, a, yeah. he's, just, he's just he's got that that championship dna just floating through him bro and he he's got something to prove huh? It's going to be a good one, bro. But, you know, I got to roll with Nate because he's the homie. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. I don't mean the homie like in any kind of area fashion. He's a local California boy. And he's entertaining to watch, man, because he talks a lot of shit. You know, he'll flip you off in the middle of the ring. And he backs it up. It, it's, he's great entertainment, man. And I, I hope he can pull this one off because that'll be a huge fucking boost to his career. And, you know, you know, he's had money issues. He's seen Conor McGregor getting stupid, stupid paper. And he's had his wars with Connor, and he wants a, He wants his wallet to look, you know, accordingly. You know, sure. this, this would be a chance to do it, to line up another. I mean, if he wins this one, who, who's next? There's all kinds of people. Well, see, the fans. way it's looking is this. This is actually supposedly, and they say it all the time, his last fight in the UFC. And one thing we know about the Diaz boys, Nick and Nate, is they've always went against the grain. They've always done their program. Not the UFC's program, but their program. They function like the Rasa functions, programming, right? But theirs, theirs and theirs alone. So, um, you know, I got to say that Nate, even this being his last fight, they threw probably the most vicious opponent they could throw at him. But at the same time, the craftiness, being a veteran, knowing exactly what he's getting into. A lot of people don't know this, but Nate actually asked for this fight. People think, okay, they just set up this whole full set up. They set him up. They put him with a monster. He's going to go in there and get whacked. That's not the way it works. Uh, Nate actually asked for this fight because it's a money fight. It's a fight that people want to see. It's a fight that, um, you know I mean? We're, we're talking about a guy here that's up and coming That's that people are scared of him. People are scared of Chimaev. They're ducking him. Um, but his last fight, he didn't look the greatest, but he did actually defeat Gilbert Burns, who uh, in that in that division, man, is, is a beast himself, right? Um and you see what happened to Kamaru Usman in the last fight. One, one, K, uh, one kick, one KO, right? So anything can happen. I think this is going to be probably the most entertaining fight of the year in the UFC. And I believe that if and if only Nate is able to pull this out, I would love to see either a rematch between Nate and Masvidal or even a rematch between Nate and Connor. 
trilogy. Let's get it, right? Let's and get I, that back I, to me. I, I always want to see the the Nate and Connor thing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> just to, just to lead up the build up the trash talk to it. Yeah. It's, it's always entertaining, you know. Even though they're both uh, you know, kind of past their prime, McGregor's had a rough run ever since that. You know, he defended his title a lot of times when he handled business and he won. Khabib was kind of man, that was brutal for him, you know. So although his star is not shining as bright, nor his mates, you put them two together. It's money on, on the main event. It's 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 gonna do massive numbers, bro. Yeah. Period. We're going to Vegas. Put it like yeah, that. Yeah, right. No doubt. We'll, go. we'll be there. Yeah. Um. Now, when we're talking about Khabib Nurmagomedov, gente, UFC Khabib. Okay, that's how much of a powerhouse he is. He personifies what a fighter is. This man that. Khabib Nurmagomedov was on a whole different level compared to UFC fighter. He never lost a round. He never been dropped. Um, his percentage rate on punches landed on him were very. I think Connor landed the most on him, or maybe even it was uh, 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 Gaethje, um, and he and he submitted both of them. Right? He's this guy was never ever 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 not once in trouble. Um, in trouble. Yeah. He never looked in trouble. He never was in trouble. Uh, he never was out of breath. He never was out of air. He told the guys exactly what he was going to do before the fight, during the fight, after the fight, and he did it. So that guy was – he, him, John Jones, George St. Pierre, greatest of all time. Um, Anderson Silva as well, right? You're throwing Anderson Silva. But I, I, I'm going to give GSP the slight nod over Anderson Silva because GSP was just a bad – he lost one fight, man, and that was a fluke. You know what I mean? He just got caught. Um, Kamar Guzman's also there. You know, he's 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 great, and he'll he'll come back. Um, him and Leon's gonna be a good. One. So let's shift, right? And let's talk about. Um, we've talked boxing. We've talked UFC. We've talked uh, Raiders. And we've talked Niners, right? We, we can't even. We shouldn't even be talking about them right now. They need defense. Well, we need to talk about the Cowboys. We're not gonna talk about because the Cowboys will be the Cowboys, right? We're gonna talk about rap music. In particular, a rap song that was uh, made over the weekend. Um, I think it was Friday. I'm kicking back. I'm in my kitchen. I'm cooking dinner. Um, I'm getting shit together. I'm a very busy man, and uh, quite contrary to what a lot of people believe. So I don't get a lot of time to to you know make dinner with the family. But when I do, I do right. So I'm doing my thing, and and I got YouTube playing constantly because I'm trying to see what's going on in the YouTube world, especially in our genre. And uh, something comes across my feed, and it's uh, Neil Vazad. Okay, first and foremost, before I disrespect anyone or say anything funny, um, I want to say I could care one way or another about this guy. I don't dislike him or like him. He's just here, right? His butt more than him. And I happen to look at, at the feed, and, and it's a rap song. And, and I've known this guy to do rap music, you know, and I'm going to give anyone the benefit of the doubt, and I'm going to listen to their music. Um, but again, no out of preservatives. If it's shit, it's shit, right? And if I smell it through the phone, then I smell it through the phone. Shout out Soldier Boy. So I'm, I'm listening, and, and the first thing I see is a silhouette of Savage Studios, who just recently passed, I think now six, seven days ago. At this time, it was five days in. Um, and we've all did our spills on it. We've all touched on it, elaborated on it, and, and it is what it is. Okay, We all know why, how, when, and, and whatever. And uh, so I'm seeing a silhouette, and he has a song, and the song's actually called Fuck Boy, right? And as I got about a couple minutes into the song, I realized – First and foremost, it was the shittiest song I had ever heard in my life. The second thing I realized was, why is this man, this grown man, this damn near 50-year-old man disrespecting uh, a dead man? Now, I know some people took what I said, some certain things, as a slight disrespect. And maybe they maybe they, maybe they can be construed as such. You got to under, understand that me and Savage did not get along. Um, and I think I made amends to that. And, you know, and the last words that we did have was, Everything's all good, man. You do you and I'll do me. And, and the, in fact, the last words we read him last time, you know, he told Rojo he had no beef with none of us. So um, we left it like that. Um, I, I, You know, rest in peace to that man and condolences really to his family. But to be disrespecting a dead man, making a rap song, that is the biggest slap in the face. That is the biggest cloud chase I've ever seen. This ain't Chicago. That ain't drill music. This is the West Coast. I mean, these are the streets, homie. Um I don't give a fuck what you think you are or who you think you are. Uh, to be disrespecting a dead man, no matter how you felt about him, is beneath, you know, being a man, bro. That's not man shit. That's that's not even children shit. That's that's 
that's an evil individual, man, or not, or, or a, a individual playing evil. What do you think, bro? Oh man, I, I I focus on a lot of the comments that, that that I got when I addressed it, man. And a lot of people are saying, you know, most people are saying that it's tacky. You know, I did a poll and like 500 something people responded to it. 92% say it's tacky and kind of a PC move. 8% said it's 8% said it's gangster. The times have changed. All you hear is whoop whoop whoop, dead homies this and whoop whoop whoop, and there's all these videos about people disrespecting graves and using the restroom on graves and it's a bad look man it's that new school stuff man and people are like well times have changed man your ogs ain't doing that you know anywhere you know what i'm saying like you know ogs are the reason you know that there's basic ground rules and in, in, in the way things go in any neighborhood or any yard bro you're not going to see no grown men doing that man and you know if, if zod was an individual who was in his teens or early 20s I wouldn't I wouldn't even necessarily comment on it because, you know, them guys got a lot to learn about life and, and stuff. You know, I didn't learn that. I'm not clowning nobody. I didn't learn nothing until I was fucking in my late 30s about expected conduct in all situations and how to be a man and how to be, you know, someone who carries himself correctly. But the fact that he's my age, bro, and doing that and thinking it's funny and thinking it's cute. Now, don't get me wrong. YouTube is about the bag, you know, you get, you come on here to get views, you know, you, you hope for support, you hope for good watch time. Mm -hmm. Hey, he got some views on that, but at some time you got to be like, man, dude, there, there's some things where, where views aren't necessarily that important, mm -hmm. especially at his age. His age is the main factor that made me think, God damn, this is, this is lame, bro. This is silly, you know? Well, it's silly trying to be a 50-year-old rapper, first of all. To me, that's the silliest part of it. Um, yeah, they're 50-year-old rapper. rappers, rappers. and their names are like Dre and, and Eminem. Well, I mean, we're talking about oh, someone who's been doing it since his teens yeah, and yeah, is now 50. <laughs> you're, not, you're not a rapper. You can't start last year at, at age 46, right, and, and proclaim to be in the game, you know? Um, yeah. uh, you know, like I say, rabbit tricks are made for kids. Silly rabbit. Um, know your lane, know your role, act your age. Carry yourself with professionalism and class, man, and respect, man. You know, not you do a poll, 99 people out of, out of, out of 100 didn't like Savage or something he did, right? Um, but 98 of those still wouldn't disrespect the dead man. It doesn't matter who he is, man. Um, you know, no matter what he said, you know, um, I don't condone it. Of course not. Um, and, and, and the man is gone, you know? So just we should let that lie. But as far as like uh, rapping about it and disrespecting him and oh, if you would have came back, I'd do it to you. Where was the first time, motherfucker? There was a first time for everything, right? I've I've always been a firm believer. I've spoken on my videos um, that I don't believe in second chances. Well, gone. Why not? Well, because there never was a first one. It's all love from the beginning. Never a chance. I don't do anything on chance. It's all love. So there can't be a second chance if there never was a first one. Well, can I have my first chance? No. You can't, right? You had love and you lost it. And that's it. Um, we can't go back. We got to keep going forward. We don't double back. I'm not Mozzie. Now, look, um, so I thought it was tacky. Just like you said, I thought it was, um, you know, I, I I guess he dropped a video saying that, that haters got his video taken down. Um, I would expect the family to feel some type of way. You know, they're still grieving. He's only been gone five days, not even put in the dirt yet. And uh, you're making videos. So I'm pretty sure the family, some other concerned citizens probably stepped up. And it's not necessarily, uh, uh, you know, with citizens, bro, they're, they're judging things on what's right, not, you know, not what's wrong. And uh, if they felt, uh, you know, that was disrespectful, I'm sure, you know, that's YouTube's not made for that. You know, to just, that's, that's a pretty serious matter, man. A man lost his life, regardless of what you think about him or what he said. He said a whole lot of shit worse to me, I guarantee, than he ever said to you. And, uh, and I didn't wish that man dead, you know? Anyways, uh, you did bad things to me. Bad shit. One never knows does one. I do. Anyways, um, okay, here's a big elephant in the room. It's an issue, man. It popped up today on my feed, um, and I wanted to talk about it. Um, why has everything got to be prejudice or racial, right? Now, I, I don't even like to say the word racist because I feel like a racist ain't racist, right, or something. Um, that word is not a word that should be used frivolously, Okay. There's a definition to that word, which is hatred. Hatred for someone based on the, you know, the the way they look or the way they smell or the way they 
tells me, she tells me, I said, you're racist. She went, I don't like the way you taste. Well, she taste it again. It'll taste different this time. You feel me? Taste, um, the, next, taste the next few inches. Yeah, taste that. Taste the rainbow. You know what I mean? Oh, it's a rainbow now? Let's get, I don't know, I Skittles. Now look, that's the beast, Marshawn Lynch. Look, when people do that, right? And I'm not going to put this on one people say black or brown or white or nobody. But anyone that, that turns something into race over the, hey, guess what? I like Michael Jordan. Well, I like Kobe Bryant. You're being racist. Why? They're both black. Yeah, but 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 I'm a brother and I chose him and you're a brown and you chose him. So that's racist. Or I can say, oh, that's right. Either way, <clears throat> if we agree to disagree or we've got a difference, a matter of opinion, doesn't mean I'm basing it just because you're a brother or because you're white or because we don't look like each other or come from the same culture. Has nothing to do with race, man. I just don't fucking like that food. Hey, why don't you like this? Because I don't like the way it tastes, bro. But it has nothing to do with it being fucking wherever it's from. I don't hate the whole fucking people because I don't like the way chow mein tastes, right? I just don't like chow mein, right? Um, I hate when people do that, okay? Um, I hate uh, when people say, you know, hey, hey Gunner, you're a... Uh, you're, you've been showing uh, prejudice. You're being prejudiced lately because you're uh, saying that, you know, uh, the brothers, man, incarcerated, don't move this way or don't move that. They don't. Do you want me to lie to you? Do you want me to be a prejudice and a liar? I could only be one or the other, according to you. Right. And I'm not going to be both. Um, so it's one or the other. You decide. Right. One thing I'm not going to ever be as a liar or prejudice, but I'm going to let you call it as you see it. I just hate it. I've addressed it in a video today. There was a brother, an OG from Compton. Respects to that brother, man. You're entitled to your opinion, but I disagree when I when you say that I'm being racist just based on uh, speaking on crit politics and I'm a dropout. Homes. My politics are not your politics, bro. There is nothing for you to drop out of, so you don't know what that is. Uh, there's a lot of brothers on the SMYR that go back to their hoods and they're embrace homes. Mexicans rock differently. That's just the way it is. It doesn't mean Mexicans are better or worse. It just means they rock Different. differently. Okay, yeah. that's it. That's all. It's a matter of difference, right? Different you know? means better or worse, bro. It's Look, you ask me, and I'm going to keep it 100% real. People are going to not like me after this, right? Hey, Gunner, what do you like? Chicano rap better or black rap? I like black. <laughs> I like Mac Dre. Too short. Same. Ice Cube. Tupac. Motherfucking Scarface. You know what I mean? That's what I grew up on. That's what hey, I like. What, do you, like, what do you like better, soccer or basketball? Exactly. I that's support. What do you like better, soccer or football? You know what I mean? It's all the same to me. I support the raza, but first and foremost, I'm not going to lie to myself on what I like better with the type of music that you know, you know, I like. You know, I'm a soul brother, man. I like soul music. Okay, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Confunction, Ohio players. Look, the real brothers right now. So I, I subscribe right now, brother. Right. You know what it is, right? Uh, Mary Jane girls. This is what I grew up on. Fire and Desire, Rick and Tina. Where am I racist in that? I'm not. I like what I like, and I'm going to fucking tell you, because I have a platform to do that. Um, I never said the N-word. I never will. I never disrespect any gente homes. And so when someone, and I don't give a fuck what color you are, or what you identify as, you think I'm racist. You know, what is, uh, uh, are you against us because you were D.O.? Well, how does that work? You know what I mean? God damn, dropouts can't do shit nowadays, right? Yeah, if you're a DO, wouldn't you be against the group that you had a falling out with and not a whole Yeah, hey, I, I, I forgive all the actors for, for breathing the same air as you. You know what I mean? I forgive. I, you know what I mean? I spent some, sorry. You know what I mean? Um, anyways, that's neither here nor there, man. I don't want to get too deep into the political part of things because um, that's definitely not for everybody. But one thing I will say is I just hate it in general in life, not even on YouTube, but just in life, man. When, you know, people think, uh, uh, if you're, they're like, hey, what color car you want? Oh, man, that white car looks tight. Why not the black one? Fuck. I don't know. Shit. Uh, it's it, a cold it car and a race car, bro. The, the yeah. race car bumps up all kinds of stuff. And don't get me wrong. There's times when there's specific situations or individuals who do certain things, say certain things, policies. I mean, different mm -hmm. groups like police or whatever do things. That are definitely racist, man. But when you have a difference of opinion, you know, about it, it doesn't always circle back to you have that opinion because you harbor ill will or animosity towards someone else. You know, I did a whole video today about it. It's like, bro, the things that happen, the the, the way back, even in, in politics inside of the walls, man, 
it wasn't necessarily racial. Now, with the white boys, okay, everybody understands they have a different kind of get down. Does that mean all of them are? No, it doesn't. Northerners, I mean, come on, man. You know what I mean? Southerners, come on, man. That's business, man. That's going to war against another group that happens to be another color for many, many years about getting the bag and establishing territory and respect. If it was white dudes out there interfering in their area, it would be the same, bro. It's a business, man. In California, what I was saying earlier, race goes out the door when it comes to the politics. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's not white Norteños. There's not black Norteños. There's no, Norteños. There's not white Serenos or black Serenos. Yeah. There's Serenos. You know what I mean? The only people that have problems, man, are some of the white groups. Everybody else isn't on that tip. And that's just keeping it straight yeah, up. Yeah, because they see race the trader house. and all that. Yeah. Now, will there be individuals who are racist? Yes, there will. And they will be from every group. North, South, every group. Black, Asian, Indian, Native American. Mm. It doesn't matter. Samoan, it, it doesn't matter. Those are individual thought processes, man. They don't reflect on the group as a whole. Yeah. Well, I've said my business about how, you know, the Crips had my back and I grew up in Detroit and all this mm -hmm. and that. Man, I like everybody based on how they conduct themselves and their relationship toward me personally. Everything else, bro, I don't give a F. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, the about any kind of skin tone, ethnicity, background, country of origin. So anything I ever say is my opinions based on experience, and none of those come with racial overtones. None. Straight yeah, up. I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, you know. Uh, <laughs> one thing I do understand is this: <clears throat> you get to a prison yard, and you could vouch this, uh, Ro. You've been there. Get to a prison yard, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, say there's a bus. Two brothers roll up. A white guy, a north and a south, right? A north, a south, and a white. I'll go walking into a bar. All right, now look, you guys come on to the yard. Um, and the first thing the brothers are going to say, hey, where do our people sit? Where do our people post up? Where's our people at? Oh, your people over there, right? Northerner, hey, where's, where's my hint at? The Ras, the right there. Southerner, same thing. White, the same thing. Why? We segregate ourselves, gente. Because there's politics, and we know we need to abide by these politics, and we're safer with our people that got our back, right? Um, So... That's called self-segregation. We do that. We choose to do that in prison. In, in the streets, we don't have to do that. Okay, we don't have to do that, man. And and I got a lot of a lot of friends that are brothers, man. I got a lot of friends that are whites, a lot of friends that are Southsiders, right? That I thought that should never happen, but it did, right? Um, and I don't have to self-segregate myself. I don't have to stay away. I can, I can talk to whoever I want and, and and do whatever I want, right? So what I'm getting at is we do it to our own, man. But don't we do it not because we want to, but because we have to out of a necessity, a necessity for the for, you know, looking out for our lives, for our livelihood, for our fucking our health. Because if you don't and you're in the wrong area, homes, politics deem you out of bounds. OK, let me explain to you guys. There's 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 day rooms. There's a line around the day room, around those those. Right. You got one side that sits over here and you got another side that sits over here and everybody's watching the same fucking show. But there's two TVs. There's two of everything. Why? Because even the cops know how it is. Right. And there's a line. And if my cell happens to be way over there on the white side of town. Right. I will walk on the outside of that line. If I get on the inside of that line on their side of day room, I will be rushed immediately. Right. And then my people will rush, And it's just going to be a big thing. Why? Because that's the way prison is. Homes, those are the po politics. That's like a safety measure. That line is to help you, to help me, to help you, right? Um, you stay off my side of the day, I'll stay off yours. And that's just the way it's going to be. We don't, me, Rojo, even people before us had no say so in that. That was, the foundation was set way before we ever fucking were born or thought of, right? We didn't set that in stone. That was already there. Still there, right? No warning shots. Um, and that's part of the politics, right? When you try to intermingle prison politics and and and, uh, and street politics together, it's never going to work out for you, right? It doesn't work out for you, man. And if it does, it shouldn't be spoken on. But um, so when you try to say everything that I don't agree with you is racial, racial or hey, Gunner, fucking, you said this and you said that. You know that the brothers rock at the North End. No, they don't, man. No, they don't. Some places they will rock together. Some places they won't. So I've, I've shit. I've been jumped by Crips and Southsiders together. I've been jumped by. Whites and Southsiders together. I've been jumped by fucking shit. Everybody, everybody, depending on where you're at and how it is there, that's how it's going to go, man. 
You know, hey, what I mean? just like we both talked about in our experiences too. In my time, the two biggest issues I seen: Serenio's taken off on the whites, or vice versa, mm. and Northerners against whites. It wasn't North and South. It wasn't really North and Black. It was whole man, whites and Serenios. Everybody thinks, oh, they rock together, rock together. Shit, they get off the most. I've heard, and then it was the Northerns and the whites. Yeah, is it, is it oh, racist? Yeah. No, it's business. I thought you said they rock together, and and you know they were against <laughs> and, black and stuff. No, no, it's business and politics above everything. Man, okay. you're not even your same. Once you join a, a organization or you're part of a movement, you're not even that race no more. You're that movement. Exactly. You're, you're, if you're a white northerner, you're a northerner now. The white There's no white no more. Yeah, yeah, bro. I mean, let me, let me explain something to you. You hit it dead on. But you notice the key pattern there, what Rojo said? The most of the shit you see happen is between south and whites and then north and white, right? Do you see that there, Hinton? Where's the brothers in this equation and the others and stuff in this equation? They're not there because no one really trips. Why? Because the whites, the north and the south are have stricter politics, stricter shit. So any little thing sets off a fucking explosion and they get off on each other for anything, right? Whereas the brothers, men are a little bit more looser. It's not because they're not more downer because I've seen some brothers take on the whole yard, right? Um, it's not because they're not more downer. They're just structured different. Their political makeup is fragmented. Have you ever seen that fucking San Quentin thing where he's like, you know, there's the, the blacks are mostly on the basketball court, but they're fragmented into different groups, whereas the northerners all together as one and they have they function and there's knives everywhere over there, right? And then you got the Pisces over there by the toilet and you got they're doing their thing, and then you got the Asians pointing every direction. Okay, did you notice what he said? The brothers were fragmented in different groups. They're not all on the same page organized. Maybe they're organized within these individual groups, but as one, the only time the brothers really come together like that is during a racial riot, okay? And let me tell you this, those happen, the wind's blowing, once every 10 years. They don't have racial rights every day in prison. Most of this shit, hey, look at I'm gonna give it to you guys real, right here, make sure that no one's trying to get me. The number one thing you're gonna see in prison is you on your own people. Cleaning trash up, basura, removals, pegadas. It's everyone on their own people. You're not going to see if they're, believe me, people don't want to fight other races in prison. Why? Because when one jump, all jump and it goes crazy and people got a lot going on in them yardas that can't be spoken on allegedly, right? And they're not fucking that off because one motherfucker, bro, uh, stepped on the next man's shoes. You know what I mean? If anything, there's going to the two main guys apologize, motherfuckers, right? And if they don't apologize, they're both getting off the yard. Your own people will deal with you. So um, it's not as racist, racist as people think. And I hate when people that don't know that's never been there fucking chime in like, oh, man, you guys just hate us because of this. And, oh, you hate because of that. And no one hates nobody, bro. They're, the word hate, bro, is a very despicable word right there next to the N-word. Um you know, it's why say the word hate, bro? You know what I mean? Oh, that why you think you say, oh man, I was pulling that bitch, but I got hated on, right? See, it's a negative word. So stop being negative, man. Stop saying that because it's very unbecoming and, and very unprofessional. And the person usually saying the word hate, hate, hate is the one that's usually hating. You know what the least the least amount of incidents I ever seen in my whole time was black against white. I never that's seen what it. What everybody would think would be the main thing. Mm -mm was the very least. Like yeah. I said, south and white, north and white, south and usually Crips, not yeah. even necessarily black, but Crips specifically. Yeah. Yeah, the, hey, one thing I will say about the Crips, all that racial shit, man. The Crips are with the shit, right? The Crips are with the shit, right? They're, they're with the shit. Um, when it comes to the brothers, man, the Kumi as well, the Bay Area. Bay Area is a little bit more wilder, a little bit more young acting, you know what I mean? They're the Bay Area, they're with that. Everybody's with the business, man. You base a man on a man, but you know that Crips, they're just a little bit more structured and organized than the rest of the brothers, I would say, in my experience. And I'm talking about the LA Crips, what are considered the down south Crips. Hey, what Gunner said right there is very important. And this this reiterates what we're saying. In his experience. In my experience only. Somebody else at a different prison also could be a could be a northerner as well, ex-northerner, current active northerner, doesn't matter. They can mm -hmm. have a totally different point of view. Now, yeah. that doesn't mean either Gunner or that guy are racist. They're only speaking about what they see and know. Mm -hmm. Because nothing we say is derived from hate toward anybody else. What we mm -hmm. say on our platforms is just what we've been through, how we analyze mm -hmm. it, 
and so on and so forth. We don't disrespect nobody. You know, some some of mine and Gunner's best homies now happen to be from down south. Who would have thought it? Shout when out Big Joe, Cholo Trucker. Yeah, Dubs, all them cats. You already know, Dubs. Well, it's that time of the day. And the, something I wanted to introduce him oh, to. I'm still puzzled by that whole shit, man. We'll talk um, about that again. So what we're going to do is we're going to call Mr. 209. Okay? And uh, he's going to... You know what? In fact, we can't call Mr. 209 because I don't, I don't know how to do that fucking blocking number. We're gonna, you guys want to do a prank call on Taco Bell? Oh, this is going to be great. Hey, do you guys, guys want to... This is happening right now. Do you guys want to do a prank call on Taco Bell? I want to see what kind of schedule. Right. Let's do it. Fuckers not answering. Lazy fuckers. Come on, Taco Bell. Pick up your phone. Okay. It seems that they don't want to answer. Should we give up? Fuck no. We're going to call another one, right? Uh, Let's call this one. This is like in a white area of town, so I know they'll answer for sure. That's racist. Yeah, I was being prejudiced there. Bunch of lazy white motherfuckers. <laughs> the troll taco? Yeah, sure. No, the not the troll tacos, the chorro tacos. They're new. I, I see I seen a commercial. They were called chorro tacos. No, they don't have those, sorry. Fuck, how about the mierda tacos? No, they don't have those either. Do you guys have the chalupa? Okay, I'm going to come give me a chalupa then. Cool. All right, cool. I'll be there. Wait for me. All right. I thought you were going to hit him with the chalupa mi verga. <laughs> I should have hit him with the chalupa mi verga, huh? Next time. That was the first one. They don't have the choloro tacos like you said, but, you know, we're just starting out here. Anyways, gente, with that being said, we're going to do a whole lot of fun things here, man. We're going to incorporate some people in here. Uh, blessings, peace to everyone, man, that, that, that can't take a joke. Um, you got to live a little. Uh, to those of you that can, we appreciate you. Anyways, with that being said, man, I'm going to speak for myself as well as Rojo when we say that right there was Rasa Radio. One last thing. Neither one of us are racist, man. No matter how you want to spin it, it's, it's not the facts, nor are any of the people you hear are supporting the genre. Straight up. Have a good one.